Welcome to the first in a series of mini webinars or vlogs focusing on personal injury litigation in different jurisdictions. Today we are focusing on limitation rules in France, the Netherlands and Spain and I'm pleased to be joined by Anna Romero from Spain, Thomas Ricard from France and Herbert Jonsson from the Netherlands. They're all specialists in personal injury uh, litigation and experienced in providing part 35 expert evidence to the English courts. Now, limitation is one of the first questions that foreign lawyers will often be asked by English lawyers. It's of critical importance and the answers uh, can have a significance in determining whether or not a case can or cannot be run. So the first topic we're going to look at everyone is um, limitation periods. And Anna, if I could start with you, um, what starts the clock running for limitation purposes in Spain? Thank you, Ian. It's a, it's a pleasure to join uh, my colleagues and to join you and Outer Temple in this, uh, in this video blogs. And I hope that we can shed some light all together on, on these limitation issues. So uh, there is no straight answer for this, but I will try to, to summarize the, uh, the situation because uh, we have uh, different uh, situations depending on whether the claim is litigated in the civil courts or in the administrative courts. That is, if a claim uh, relates to uh, a tort or relates uh, purely or relates to a uh, negligence caused by a public body. So where the negligence is caused by a public body, it is, um, it is clear by the law that it is regulated that the limitation period will start from the moment of knowledge of the harm that has been caused. If we are in a purely civil claim, uh, the limitation period will start running from uh, the date of stabilization of the injuries. And uh, I think we will talk about this later on, but it's, it is a, a tricky concept, and especially because it, it's not um, regulated, so it's developed by the case law. But this, uh, this, is, this would be, from the Spanish point of view, the, the date when the uh, limitation period will start running for civil claims for personal injury, the date of consolidation of the injuries or stabilization of the injuries. And what's the situation in the Netherlands? Well, thank you, Ian. Uh, no, normally, the general limitation period is five years starting uh, at the date the plaintiff becomes aware of the damage and an attribute responsibility to the defendant. So those are two demands. And usually, for example, in, an, uh, in a traffic accident, that would be the date of the accident itself. But for example, when you have a medical or malpractice case, that could be a, a lot further down the road. Uh, when you decide, for example, when you find out uh, a few years later that they, the medical malpractice instead of the date when it happened. So there is, there is a period of five years, but the starting point could be different. But in a road traffic accident case, the starting point is usually uh, the date of the accident. But there are rules in the Netherlands that if it's not obvious that you've sustained an injury, such as in a medical malpractice case, it's the date when you become aware that there's a problem. Yeah, you should, you should, you should be aware of the damage and you should be aware of the, the uh, possibility of suing somebody. For example, if I haven't found out about it and I find out about it later on down the road, then the period of five years starts later down the road. But it is uh, uh, down in our, our, our civil law system. But you could have a discussion about that, uh, with, especially in the malpractice week, you could have that. But the, the general period is five years. Yeah. What's the position in France, Thomas? Uh, first, thanks, Ian, for uh, having us. Uh, for those who are wondering, uh, I am a Bob Dylan fan. Uh, to answer your question, um, the clock starts for limitation purpose uh, on the day on which the right holders knows that uh, his right has been violated or should have known that it's been violated. After that, you've got, I would say, different level, which would be, for example, in insurance cases, the day of the occurrence of the damage, you would have to look at the insurance policy. And then when it comes to uh, personal injury, uh, the issue is a little bit more subtle here. Uh, the clock starts from the date of consolidation of the claimant's condition. Um, to, um, I think consolidation up. confuses English lawyers a lot, Thomas. So could you explain that in a bit more detail? Uh, a, a lot of things in French <laughs> confuse uh, English lawyers. But, uh, but that's the beauty of it. Uh, Consolidation date is the moment where the claimant's condition has stabilized and is, um, cannot get worse 
uh, and it's medically assessed. It could get better, and that's uh, that's uh, that's uh, that's you know, he's better off. Uh, but it's a moment where you consider that it's stable. To come back to um, what uh, Gerben was saying about uh, the clock starting, uh, for example, on asbestos case, the clock starts from the moment you know you could have been exposed to asbestos, not from the day you've got symptoms. So, um, and I think that's the usefulness of, of getting advice in, in different countries is we've got those subtleties. Uh, the consolidation date is a very French concept. It's the moment you're stabilized, where it's permanent, where you can give some permanence to your assessment. And that's uh, sometimes when the judge can make his decision. But that's determined on medical evidence rather than an assessment by the lawyers, is it? Indeed. But then it's a, a, a medical uh, concept. So usually the uh, doctors would have uh, their first say on that. But then courts have a discretionary power of assessment. So in some instances, when there is a debate, they might decide to depart from it. Or for, uh, uh, I would say, sim to simplify things, decide that this consolidation date is the day they're going to give their court decision. Thank you. And how does that consolidation concept work in Spain, Anna? Do you have something similar? It's actually, it's very similar to what Thomas uh, was portraying. It's a, it's a medical concept again, and it, uh, it, it is the point where the, the injuries are likely to have reached a, 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 a stage where they, they can be diagnosed and uh, further improvement may be possible, but uh, the, the extent of the permanent symptoms can be established as a, in the whole. It also requires uh, that um, throughout that uh, period of temporary incapacity, the victim receives active medical treatment. And that's not any kind of treatment. It's a treatment intended to heal the injuries. So no, it wouldn't uh, be the case where the victim is receiving palliative treatment to deal with the consequences of the injuries, but treatment that is intended to improve the, the injuries to a point where they can be regarded as, as consolidated, consolidated. So we have to combine the, the two situations, the stabilization of the injury, but also the continuity of the, of the active medical treatment throughout that period. And would that include something like physiotherapy? It depends. It depends on the nature of the physiotherapy treatment that the victim is receiving. If it's physiotherapy, which is actu actually intended to heal the injury, or to improve its condition, then it would be regarded as this, as this kind of uh, a curative or active medical treatment. However, if it's physiotherapy, which is uh, intended to help the victim manage with uh, his permanent symptoms, then that would be, um, wouldn't be the case of, uh, of, uh, of a treatment that would be regarded as, uh, as uh, extending the, the, the consolidation point. So, uh, moving on to the issue of the period of the limitation period. Herbin, you mentioned that there's a five-year limitation period. Is that anything, is that any different for motor cases? Yes, thank you for asking. It is, it is different in an RTA case, especially with the uh, direct right of action against the RTA insurer. Then it's a limitation period of three years. And within these three years, you have to at least uh, re report the accident to the insurer. And there's no formal, uh, formal requirements to get to the RTA insurer, but you have to do that within three years to, to establish your direct right of action against the RTA insurer. So, so as the, long as the motor insurer is notified in that three-year period, yeah, that's, that's normally, okay. That's normally enough. Yeah, yeah, yeah. it's very, it's, it's not, uh, there are no formalities or anything with regards to that. So it's a very, if you have any formal negotiations with the RTA insurer, then the uh, three-year period is, uh, is, is agreed and, and usually also extended. And what also is different, there is a three-year period with the uh, product liability and uh, public transportation that is also three years. So you have to be aware of those. Uh, those, those are the two main uh, exceptions as well. Yes. And Anna, we, we know in the typical limitation period in Spain is one year. Are there any differences in Spain? And does it vary by region? For example, Catalonia. Yes, exactly. And the Catalonia region, they have their own civil code. 
and uh, within the, the regulations contained in their civil code, there's a specific provision for a limitation period of two years for civil claims. And also I would like to refer to the contractual limitation period because it's also relevant, for example, in cases where we run a, a claim for medical negligence against, for example, a private hospital. And those, those uh, claims are uh, governed by a limitation period of five years, which is uh, considerably longer than the, than the usual uh, short limitation period that we, that we unfortunately have in Spain. And Thomas, is there any variation from the 10 year period in France, either based on French territories or on any other particular quirks of French uh, law? Not, not, not so far. <laughs> We're still uh, uh, united, uh, but th there are two things to know, uh, which, which I think are, are relevant here. Uh, the limitation period is 10 years for, from the date of consolidation for a personal injury action. Now, that has to be nuanced when it comes to tort or contract cases where it's five years. It has to be nuanced depending on who you're claiming against. If it's against uh, uh, the state, for example, that might vary. And, and finally, um, if, for example, you're having negotiation with the compensation fund, uh, it can be five years for personal injury cases. Uh, what I mean is uh, probably best to uh, uh, double check when it comes to, to mm. those uh, uh, timelines because the, the 10 years may suffer some, some exceptions. I think what we've learned from this is that it's, it'd be very dangerous for an English lawyer, in fact, a lawyer in, even in your own country, to make broad brush assumptions as to what a limitation period is and it can very much depend on the cause of action how the harm occurred or even who's responsible as to the length of the limitation period brilliant um moving on to extending uh, limitation periods anna um, probably spain gets the most focus with regards to the extension of limitation periods because the limitation period is so short um, so do you need to bring court proceedings within one year of the accident, the date of harm, or is there a way of extending that forward in time in Spain? Mm -hmm. Fortunately, for civil claims, we don't need to bring uh, court proceedings to extend the limitation period because then it would be a complete nightmare, which is already difficult with a short limitation period that you were referring to, but we can quite easily extend it. Uh, what is important is that they, we have evidence of the defendant being aware of the claimant's intention to claim. So such evidence, we usually uh, make it happen through a, a certified a correspondence, such as we call it Bureaufax, by which you let the defendant know that you are intending to bring a claim uh, for personal injury and from the date of receipt of, of such communication to the defendant, the limitation period will be interrupted and will start running again. If, if we don't have such, a, such evidence, such a bureau facts, the courts have also accepted in other uh, circumstances, other types of communication, such as email correspondence or even postal correspondence. But to be safe, we, we usually, try to use a, a way that we can uh, file in court as evidence that limitation has been interrupted. So the Bureau of Facts is ideal for this. But we have to be very careful with, uh, I was referring before to claims against public bodies, such as town halls or public hospitals. This cannot be interrupted. The one year limitation period that applies to these kind of claims cannot be interrupted. And in these cases, as Ian was referring before, we need to file the claim uh, and, uh, directly. So, so th that makes it very difficult and we have to be very cautious with these kind of claims because the fact that we cannot interrupt the limit and it's still one year which is very short and cannot be interrupted makes it very difficult and you need to be very very much aware of, uh, of the time limitation in, that, in those kind of claims. So if there's a public body involved it really does require urgent attention to get the case up and running within Definitely. one year. Yes. And um, with regard to the Bureau of Facts, is it usually best for a lawyer to produce that document or could anybody do that? I would recommend that it's done by a lawyer. The reason for this is that we need to ensure 
that the correct defendant is receiving it. So imagine if you make a mistake in the in the, the, the person or the entity that you are addressing the Bureau of Acts to, that would mean that your limitation period has not been interrupted. And you also need to make sure that you that you gather evidence that of a receipt of the, uh, such communication because that's what will uh, trigger the interruption of the limitation. The receipt by the defendant of the communi communication from the claimant confirming the intention to bring a claim or to pursue a claim or continue uh, pursuing a claim. Now, a lot of English-oriented um, cases that are involve Spanish law that are brought in England involve direct rights of action against insurers. Mm -hmm. Does the Bureau of Facts need to be served on the tort visa, so the party who's being alleged to have caused the harm, or on the insurer? It would need to be one the other, or the other or both of them, because the fact that they are both jointly liable under Spanish law uh, it reflects on the limitation period in that the, in, the interruption of the limitation period at one, against one of them will affect, you know, the, all the jointly uh, liable uh, parties uh, in, in that case. So, for example, in the, in the situation that you are referring, if we interrupt the limitation uh, period against the insurer, that would mean that if we want to bring the insured in the proceedings, the limitation period will be also uh, regarded as interrupted against the insured and the other way around. Thomas, uh, you have a long limitation period of 10 years in France. Is there any need ever to extend it beyond that period? Uh. Practically, it very, very rarely happens. Uh, however, what is interesting is to look at whether there is any, um, I would say, uh, procedure that might have interrupted this. Uh, it could be a, a criminal claim, could be a, another proceedings, it could be a mediation. It's just to get a good feeling of where you're at, uh, it's interesting to see whether anything has interrupted it. Conversely, make sure not to extend it too much. Uh, for example, sometimes people will look at a criminal claim uh, and that criminal investigation might actually, actually delay things. So uh, I think it's just in, the issue is relevant, but you have to see it the other way around, not to make sure not to extend things uh, indefinitely, which would uh, uh, prevent compensation or, or, or from the insurance side, prevent from a, a clear closure of the case. And what's the situation in the Netherlands, Harvey? Well, it's the same as in Spain with regards to the RTA insurer. It, it doesn't matter who you, you take, the insurer or the, the tortfeasor. And any form of negotiations will suspend that uh, uh, period as well. It, it's even so that if the insurer wants to cut off uh, 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 that limitation period, they have to send a letter explicitly stating to end negotiations and have that in a registered letter to the uh, to the opposing party and then the the period of three years starts and a lot of insurers don't know that they have to do that so it's very difficult for them to uh, finish uh, the period of limitations but if you with regards to uh, liability for example employers liability you have to send uh, a, an email stating just about the same as in spain that the uh, uh, based on the, the right article in the law, and then the the, uh, the new period of five years starts again, which could be indefinite. We don't have a, a, a term of 20 or 30 years when it ends. You could, but you have to make uh, that statement again every five years. Then you can extend it uh, indefinitely. So you have you effectively buy yourself another five years unless the insurer contacts you to say the negotiations are off. But what, what happens if they do that? Well, if they do that, we're talking about an RTA insurer. Yes. If, if they do that, then it's another three years that you have. I see. So you're not in trouble at all, but you have another three years. But if you have a normal liability scheme with regards to a company liability or personal liability, then you have to send that uh, letter to extend the period to the, uh, the, the liable party itself and not the liable insurer. Thank you, Herben, for um, that interesting response. We're going to conclude the end of this episode. Thank you very much, all three of you, for taking part. And uh, we're going to come back with a second episode where we conclude looking at issues of limitation in France, Spain and the Netherlands. I hope to see you again soon.